finally, I can't believe I'm getting around to doing this review like a week or so after I finish this book. Hey guys, so today I am going to be doing a review of a book that I probably should have reviewed like days ago, but I just haven't really had time and I just haven't really had the energy to do the review because I just have been really lazy and all I want to do is sleep and plus they've been putting me in for a lot of hours at work so it's like they can't function. So the book that I'm going to be reviewing for you today is the one and the only Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. And this book is the second book in the Dark Art of Ices trilogy. I think the trilogy. And so basically this follows the events of Lady Midnight. So if you haven't read Lady Midnight, I suggest you go do that now. Or if you've read Lady Midnight but you haven't read Lord of Shadows, I'd shy away from this video because it's going to have a lot of, lot of spoilers. So this book starts off months after the last events of Lady Midnight, where basically Malcolm Fade is dead because Emma killed him. And so this book is basically the consequences of Malcolm Fade's death and what goes on within the Blackthorn family and what goes on in the Shadowhunter world when he's dead. And so there are a lot of, like, lo love triangles I guess you could say in this book like there's love triangles galore which kind of frustrated me a little bit because constant like you just want someone to pick one person but then they are stuck between two people and it's just it's, it's crazy anyway this book gave me all the feelings and I think I cried at the end I remember reading this in the car on the way to my brother's uh, basketball practice and I finished the book in the car on the way there and I kind of like shut the book and I had tears welling up in my eyes. So I'm going to say some spoilers now because of uh, my feelings. We find out that there's like this big battle in the end of the book. And the Blackthorns are fighting and all of the Blackthorns are basically fighting except for like the littlest one. And my... My name, well not like my namesake, but her name is Livy, or people call me Livy, because my name is Olivia, so like Oli Livy is like a nickname, but like it was for one time. Anyway, so my like a namesake, I think she gets stabbed, and I think she's dead at this point, but I'm like, I was crying because of Julian, I was crying because of Mark, and I was like, my children, why are you killing off my people? I love them. Oh my god. And I'm crying just thinking about it. But that just gave me all the feelings. I loved it so much. So this book, it gave me all the feelings, but it did, at points, kind of frustrate me. Like, in a sense where you just want, again, with the love triangles, you just want one person to pick one person instead of being stuck in between two. And there's two major love triangles. There's the Mark, Emma, and Julian love triangle. And then there is the <laughs> Christina, Kiernan, and Mark love triangle. And then, like, Diego's in there, but, he, like, he's not in there. And I just want someone to pick someone. That's all I want. Like, I would prefer Emma and Julian be together, make the Gemma happen. And I would prefer Christina and Mark to be together. But that, that that doesn't really happen either because they're both just like, they're not choosing people. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? Please just pick people. I'm going to move on to something that's like a major spoiler. It was kind of spoiled for me. Um, it was spoiled for me, but it was also spoiled for a lot of people who went to the Cassandra Clare panel at BookCon. Because the interviewer basically spoiled a part of... Lord of Shadows, and half of these people haven't even read Lord of Shadows because it had just come out. I didn't go to this panel, Serena did, and she told me what happened, and I was like, okay, like, I'm probably going to get to it eventually, but 
not at that moment. Like, I was still reading it after BookCon. But anyway, I'm going to spoil something huge. So, if you do not want to know, if you have not finished Lord of Shadows, go away! I'm sorry, just go away, because I'm going to scream about it. So, this is the spoiler, guys. So, right, go away. So, we find out a certain character is transgender, and I... It was revealed at that book con panel with Cassandra Clare that there was a certain person who was transgender, and Serena told me this, like, she didn't, she didn't tell me who it was, because she didn't want me to be spoiled, which I love her for that, because I was so surprised. If you don't know, Diana, who is the, the teacher of the Blackthorns, who teaches the Blackthorns, have, have their lessons, she was originally a man, and now she's transgender and I just that just made me love her even more like I was crying because I found out about that because like it must be hard in the shadow hunter world to accept anything like LGBTQ plus like we see with like Magnus and Alec and it's one of the black the, the oldest blackthorn sister and Aileen and it must be hard because they're kind of an old-fashioned group. They don't really understand the LGBTQ plus ways, which, like, I I love how Cassie Clare is bringing all of this in there because I have friends who are in this community and I support them and I'm very supportive of all of their sexualities and genders and... I just, I love how she just incorporates more, because sure we had the gay couple, Magnus and Alec, and then we had the lesbian couple of um, Aileen, and you have those two pairings, but like we don't really have a lot outside of the spectrum. There's people who suspect that Raphael was asexual, and... I'm all for that. I have friends who are asexual, and I appreciate asexuals, and I just, I love how she just puts more of these, these different sexualities and genders, and I just, I cry for them because with Diana's backstory, we find out she was originally a David, and nobody really accepted him slash her, and the way she goes about telling this, she tells it to um, the leader of the hunt, and I ship that so hard, <laughs> I really do, and I I just ship it even more now that that like you find out that this birth that Diana is transgender because you're just like you just want them to be happy, so yes, that's that's a thing in my life right now that I'm just like crying for. We're gonna go on to the whole Annabelle Blackthorn thing, so. We find out that Malcolm is dead, but he's not really dead, and he casts this spell to bring back Annabelle Blackthorn back. And Annabelle back Blackthorn was like the love of his life back when she was alive, and then apparently the clave killed her. So he brought her back to life, and she ended up killing him. <laughs> and I was like, you go girl, you don't need no man in your life. You don't need no man. And it was really funny. I was just like... You, you, you killed the, the, the hand that gave you life again, and I'm just very proud of her, but at the, on the other hand, I'm very pissed off with her because the person who killed Libby was Annabelle, and it was just, like, heartbreaking because Libby was, like, my fa one of my favorite Blackthorn children besides Ty and Drew. Like, I, Libby, Ty, and Drew were the best, and I think Libby was Ty's twin, so I cry for Ty because his twin is gone. Ugh, guys, uh, this is just a video of me ranting on about Lord of Shadows. Let's be serious. On to, like, the actual, like, there's some really good references in this book, like, the outside things, other, like, so they reference Sherlock a lot, or, like, it's Sherlock Holmes, but I just associate it with Sher Sherlock because I love Benedict Cumberbatch. 
So they mentioned like 221 Baker, 221B Baker Street, and I'm just like, go boys. They uh, referenced the Titanic because so uh, Emma, she says, you could sketch me, draw me like one of your French girls, <laughs> and then Julian's like, I hate that movie. You know I do. <laughs> then Emma says, the first time we watched Titanic, you cried, and I was just like, this this is just the perfect perfect book right now. Serena said at one point that there was a Doctor Who reference. I don't remember that. And I tried to find it, but I couldn't. There's <laughs> there's a Lord of the Rings reference briefly. There's a Sleeping Beauty reference. There's a ha there's a stinking freaking Star Wars reference. Oh my god. <laughs> I was dying when I read the Star Wars reference. I was laughing. I was so, so happy because Emma says, like, she's thinking about, like, Sebastian Morgenstern, and then she's like, Luke, I am your father. And I'm just like... And then there's, like, a Peter Pan reference, in a way. And then there's, like, a haunted reference, which we all know Drew loves her haunted stuff. I kind of took this one as a, I was thinking a Doctor Who reference because Libby says run and I just think of I think of 10 and 11 I'm just like oh my babies and the last reference that I have come to, to know if I can get to this is there's a, another Lord of the Rings reference and they just talk about how someone looked like Gandalf but anyway this book had me in tears it just it made me cry, it made me laugh, it just, it gave me all of the feelings, all at once sometimes. And I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars, because this, this book is a good sequel. It was awesome, like, I thought it was pretty cool, and I can't wait for the next book. So, my name is Olivia, you're on Bookish Brickers, nice channel, I hope to see you soon with another video.